So what we're going to show here today is how with the UbiSense uh, dimension for real-time location system, we're able to generate very accurate and reliable locations for any tagged object or asset. But in today's case, we're going to be demonstrating how tracking a person uh, in order to support contact tracing and social distancing can be done in a very reliable way using the UbiSense dimension for location system and how many of the pitfalls that are seen in using um, quite common peer-to-peer -peer approaches that are on the market today uh, are not exhibited when using Dimension 4. So what you can see on me is a Dimension 4 mini tag worn as a wrist tag. And inside this tag, there is a, uh, uh, a vibrating motor and uh, that provides haptic feedback to any person who comes within the defined social distancing boundary of another person also wearing a UbiSense Dimension 4 uh, wrist tag. Now what you can see in the background is a live view of the location system. You can see me moving my wrist tag and an accurate trace of those movements being generated on the screen. So as I go about my day-to-day -day business and walk around the room, you can see that a reliable trace is being generated for me anywhere I am in the room. So what we're going to see next is how bringing multiple tags into the environment, Dimension 4 gives us a reliable, accurate location for all of those tags so that we can see where anybody who's wearing a tag is located in any, at any time. So I'm going to invite one of my colleagues in and we're going to move around the room and you're going to be able to see how in real time we're constantly getting an updated location for each person, which we will then feed into our uh, contact tracing and social distancing capabilities in the next couple of shots. So come on in, Andy. So Andy's the yellow trace, and I'm obviously the blue trace. And as we move around the room, So what we're going to see now is how we can take that accurate location data out of Dimension 4 and push it through the UbiSense Smart Space platform to build a real-time digital twin of people's movements in any environment. So what you can see in the background is an environment model, a virtual model uh, of our office space. And you can see my avatar with a green safe zone defined around me. These are virtual spaces that we define in Smart Space. They're software defined, which means that we can make them as big or as small as we like, and we can define as many spaces as we like. So as soon as another person comes into and interacts with my space, we automatically detect that in Smart Space, and we can use that either for alerting purposes or also for building up that contact tracing history in the Smart Space uh, COVID-19 contact tracing application. So I'm going to invite Andy to come back in and we're going to see him uh, and myself walk around the room and maintain safe social distancing. So what we're going to see now is how uh, we can use smart space to detect and distinguish between those contact events that are likely to happen in the workplace. So we distinguish between different types of contact. Uh, one of the key characteristics being time. A passing contact, people passing each other in a, in a hallway or an aisle, uh, is a low risk contact. And while we want to record those events, we don't want to categorize them as high risk and necessarily put them into our contagion model. A high-risk contact is one which happens for longer than some defined duration. And we have a defined duration uh, of a few seconds defined in smart space for our demonstration purposes today. So I'm going to ask Andy to come back in and we're going to demonstrate how smart space can both visually distinguish between uh, those passing versus full contact events and we'll eventually show how we can generate a feedback to the person through the wearable that I've got on my arm. Thing 
Okay. Right. Now we're going to now we're going to demonstrate a full contact between Andy and I, which we will do by putting our uh, our tags within the social distancing boundary of each other, but to try and maintain appropriate social distancing. So what you will see is we have a timeout of a full contact, and you may have heard the contact event being triggered. So what I'm going to show you now, uh, just so it's a bit closer for the camera so you can see in here, is how whenever somebody comes into my social distancing boundary, and smart space detects that for being of the necessary full contact duration, I can get that real-time feedback, that haptic feedback, to my UbiSense mini tag. So Andy's going to approach me, and as soon as he's in my space, you'll see the same change in representation, and as soon as that four seconds is up, that tag buzzes, and I immediately know to turn around and see what's happening behind me. What, one of the important characteristics of using location to do social distancing and contact tracing is that it's reliable all of the time. And the way that the UbiSense system maintains reliability is using an infrastructure-based approach. We have continuous line of sight and visibility to the tag that's attached to the person wherever they're wearing it, whether it's on a lanyard or on their wrist or on some other location on the body we have those lines of sight to the tag. One of the failure modes of a pure peer-to-peer -peer solution is that if the human body, which blocks radio waves, is between the two tags, you're unable to establish that line of sight. And then the system has to fall back to any other signal it can see of the emitting tags coming from the person's body. And that is usually a reflection in the environment. Reflections will give you inaccurate location results and they may either give you false positives when people are passing and the tags can't see each other, or even worse, false negatives, and people are actually within two meters of each other and the system is not aware of it. So to simulate that in the UbiSense system, what Andy and I are gonna do is we're gonna put the tags behind our backs. So our bodies are between the signals that are coming from the tag. So in a peer-to-peer -peer approach, these two tags would not be able to see each other. But in the UbiSense system, you can see that our locations remain stable and when we approach each other and we're within, within that boundary we get a reliable contact event and you can see the tag buzzed again to let me know.